let's start with a brief introduction. And we're going to start with Alyssa. Each person on the panel after Alyssa, would you please just share your name, your title, uh, where you work currently, and a, just a touch, a tad bit on your background, um, especially if you're at, with Jack and Alyssa being not, not in Japan yet, you know, give us your professional background. Um, so go ahead, Alyssa. Hi, everybody. My name's Alyssa. Um, I'm currently doing partner development and getting ready to go to Japan. So right now I'm in Oklahoma. Um, and I recently, well, maybe not recently, the end of 2019, I graduated from school. And so this past year have just been working on partner development. And uh, go ahead, Jack. Um, yeah, so my name is Jack Clonch. Um, I am currently in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, yeah, I'm also doing partnership development, getting ready to go to Japan. Um, and I just finished up working, uh, doing an internship at a church uh, here in Fort Worth. Um, yeah, it was a great experience, but now I just got to go to Japan. And uh, Ken? Yes, Ken Taylor, and I've um, been in Japan for 23 years, uh, and I'm currently sitting in downtown Tokyo. If you've been to Japan, just close by the, mo the most um, uh, busiest the crosswalk in, in the world called Shibuya Crossing. Uh, people who know me will see me rarely in a jacket because I have another function to go to after this. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Cheryl and Leon? And Jeffrey. Do you want to sit? No, thank you. We are in Japan. We live in uh, we live northeast of Tokyo, and we are technically church planters, but our main work is with the intellectually disabled. Perfect. And Kevin, we've been here for right. over thirty years. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight years. Thirty-eight years, give or take. You know. All right, uh, Kevin. Kevin Lieberman. Uh, living in uh, Kawasaki, Japan, southwest of Greater Tokyo, and uh, serving with World Venture here in church planting work. We've been here. My wife is not with me, but she's here. Uh, we've been here, Cody and I have been here for uh, 22 years with World Venture. Uh, she, she was born here, so she's been here a few more years. Uh, than me but uh it's not nice to talk about a lady's age so just a couple just a couple just a couple years longer than i have 22 years uh with world venture for both of us lou and kathy they are church partners so i'll get let you give a brief introduction of you you both and your church hi i'm lou and my wife kathy we are uh both retired uh we attend grace Church of Muhammad, and uh, uh, we serve on the missions committee, have been on the missions committee for 40 plus years. Uh, and it, uh, for a while, my wife was, for many years, my wife was chair of the committee. Um, and I had been church treasurer for almost 30 years. So uh, very much involved in, in uh, uh, supporting missionaries by writing checks. <laughs> well, more than that, probably praying and everything else, right? That too, yes. Okay, well, we'll get into more in that relationship part later. Um, so today, uh, we're going to bring you on a journey um, from appointee to retirement. And with it, we're going to talk about the Japanese culture and the way God works through the joys and heartaches to engage the world for gospel impact. As each speaker talks, another of the panel may offer perspective based on their own experience to the speaker. And as you listen, maybe you can relate to any of their struggles or their joys. Um, you might want to write those down. You can share that with them if you relate to what they're saying. Um, that's also always so helpful. Um, write down any questions as they talk and um, save them for the end. So Jack, we're going to start with you. I like to pick on you. You're the quietest one, so of course I'm going to pick on you. Um, all right, so what made you choose Japan? I mean, you're you're fairly new to, to World Venture, right? You came in 2020? Yeah, so I got appointed in March of 2020. Um, and it's a very cliche answer, but it's God that brought me to Japan. 
um, when I was first looking at being a missionary, Japan was actually the last on my list. Um, and yeah, just after failed attempts, he kept showing me that he wanted me to go to Japan. And uh, yeah, so it was just really encouraging the entire time knowing, um, yeah, I mean, through, through all tests and trials that no matter what we do, um, he's God is still going to do his will and he's going to send us where he wants us. Um, and, and yeah, the more I've learned about Japan, the more I'm excited to be there. And I just wish COVID would be <laughs> over so that way I could be there. <laughs> All right. Um, Alyssa, uh, you started uh, with us on a, I, I heard from the grapevine through certain, you know, little birdie that you, uh, you started on a short term trip to Ta- Taiwan, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I did uh, a two month like internship there with the church planting team. Perfect. Um, so explain to us how you became inspired to raise support to go to, to Japan and including, could you talk about that cross, how that cross project um, that Kevin's into that kind of inspires you as well. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah. So for the longest time I had known that God was calling me to missions. I just didn't know where that was. And so I like talked with world venture and I was like, okay, I know God's calling me to missions, but I don't know where is that? Okay. Like, can I still be a missionary with you guys? And they were like, of course you can like, let us help you figure that out. And so they connected me with um, missionaries from all over the world. And literally like, Every one of those teams, I was like, I could join any of these teams and it would be amazing. And I was like, I I really wanted to work with an unreached people group and I wanted to do church planting. And so I had been, um, I was praying and I was like, I really want to see your hand like leading me. So I then talked to the Japan field. So actually I was talking to Ken and Kevin and the ent- I had prayed. I was like, okay, Lord, just give me like a passion and excitement to just be a part of whatever team like I'm supposed to be a part of. Um, and as I was talking with them, my heart was like pounding out of my chest. I was like, oh my goodness. Like they had been praying for like younger missionaries to join them. I had prayed a long time ago. I was like, God, it'd be so cool if like somebody on my team had also graduated from Moody Bible Institute, which is where I went to school. And then Kevin tells me that he's a Moody alumni. And I was just like, okay, I guess Japan it is. So Kevin, what'd you think of Alyssa? Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I thought she should be less excited about Japan. Wow, that's great. We're, we're thrilled that uh, we have this whole new generation of younger people coming out to the field and excited and passionate about uh, serving here and being involved in church planting work. So we need more and more like this. Excited for Alyssa. Ready to welcome you. I'm ready to learn from you guys. All right. All right. So Jack and Alyssa, have you ever, ever been to Japan? No? no. So tell me what you think Japan is like and the anybody else in the panel is okay to interact with them on this. What do you think that you're going to you're what Japan is going to be like for you? What do you think you're going to experience when you get there? You want to go first? Sure. <laughs> Don't be afraid, it's okay. So I don't know. Okay, so I've been like trying to learn as much as I can through like online classes, but also like tons of YouTube videos, um, like people interviewing Japanese people on the streets. And so I don't know. I've been learning a lot and I'm sure that some of the things I've been learning are like inaccurate perceptions of Japan. But I do know that it's going to be really difficult and like I'm really excited and I can't wait. But I know that when I get there, like it's going to be really hard. I'm going to be like a little infant again, like not even able to say like very simple things. I'm probably going to be like really lonely at times, but 
I have a feeling I have a pretty good team, so that'll be helpful. And Jack? Uh, yeah, so I really have no expectations. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just going to go in there knowing that it, it's where and what it is. Um, but a lot of what I do know has actually come from Alyssa. Um, to just send YouTube videos or just information every now and then. And, um, and yeah, so I know very little, but, um, yeah, I'm still excited. <laughs> so Alyssa, um, and Jack, we're going to talk about your, your, what you've been learning so far, but I'm going to start with Jack. Um, since you're fairly new, um, have you ever raised support for anything? Um, no, I have never had to raise support for anything else before. Now, um, how has raising support taught you to be more faithful to, um, in your walk? Man, that um, it, it's, it's actually been something that I've been praying and thanking God about a lot lately. Um, because without this, it, I, I wouldn't understand him and also my relationship with him um, in the same way. Because when uh, in, in this time and in this season, there's such a very sweet vulnerability um, that uh, I, I don't know if I'd be able to get um, in any other season. And so it's challenging. And there are times when I do not like it at all. Um, but knowing that I that the we have a father that we can go back to um, and that we know that he is our provision and that he is going to provide for us in his time and in his way. Um, it's, it's very reassuring. i um, very thankful for it, but um, yeah. So it's, it's definitely grown my heart for him a lot. Do you have anything specific that happened that you wish to share? It's okay if you don't, but do you have anything specific? One, one story. Oh man, I'm already on the spot. Now you're putting me on the spot again. Oh, well, yeah. Um, I, uh, I don't, I don't know if I have a specific story. I just know that, uh, time and time again, uh, it shouldn't be surprising because I should just know that he's going to be providing, but he provides out of the most random places, um, or places that I thought were dead ends. And so those are, uh, those are always sweet. And Alyssa, I have, I, we talked on email before this event and you told me um, that you had something to share. So first of all, tell me how God has grown you in support raising and tell me about your amazing experiences in your prayer life. So yeah, partner development this past year, I've learned so much. I think probably the biggest, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't like say the biggest. One of the things that I've learned um, is that like, I have been learning about like my weaknesses and where I'm inadequate and that like, it's okay. And like what I can't do, God can do. And that has been just like really throughout every meeting that I have with people. Um, just like really comforting to know, like it's not by my strength. It's not by like, if I, say something good or like I'm I don't like it's not dependent upon me um it's about like is God working in this person's heart and and going back to prayer yeah that leads back to prayer um so obviously I've just been praying like that God would raise up people to like join my team of partners um I have been praying with a friend of mine this past year almost like every other day. And I have never seen God answer so many prayers in my entire life. I like went to write down um, specifically like how God had answered every single prayer for the past like three months. And he answered like over 30 prayers so specifically. And it was just really, really cool to see that like when we come before him and like ask these things and like get to know him, like he's happy to like reveal himself to us in those ways um and one story that i have from praying with that friend um 
So I reached out to a friend of mine to see if she wanted to hear about uh, what God is doing in Japan and if she might want to join me. So I met with her, we talked. At the end, she was like, Alyssa, you're not going to believe this. And I was like, what? And she was like, I have been praying for the past week that God would give me an opportunity to be a part of the Great Commission because I know right now that I'm not called to go, but I know I'm still called to be a part of the Great Commission. And like, this is him answering that prayer. And I was just like, what? And she's been so excited to partner with me. And like, we've been calling every week and yeah. So it's just been really, really sweet to have those kind of partnerships with people. Perfect, beautiful. All right, so um, we've talked a little bit uh, about the uh, appointee process. An appointee is someone who is not yet supported and is in a season of support raising. Um, let's jump ahead. I want to introduce you to Ken Taylor and Kevin Laverman. So they, the question to all, uh, to both of you is, and we'll start with Ken. Ken, how many years have you served in Japan again and describe what you do again? Yes, so I've been in Japan for 23 years now, and um, I am currently the field leader for about 10 years, and that's about a third of what I do. The other third of what I do is um, a uh, leading a what I call a uh, really innovative ministry where we're teaching uh, Japanese non-Christians to sing black gospel music. So figure that out. That's only God. And uh, that's because of that's who God is. And um, so that's about a third of what I do. We've got choirs all over Japan and so forth. Uh, but the other third of what newest ministry I'm involved in is kind of a business as mission, trying to reach the 99% of the Japanese through a for-profit corporation. Beautiful. And Kevin, same question. We've been, we started in Yokohama, uh, started uh, in our living room there in Yokohama with a church plant and uh, Den and Grace Chapel and it grew and uh, believers were added. We moved to a private hall and uh, have now the last 19 years um, been uh, involved with Den and Grace Chapel and, and forming that church and uh, God has blessed us over the years bringing people to Christ and uh, seeing um, a number of people baptized and growing up in their faith and uh, they themselves uh, also um, being witnesses and evangelizing and reaching uh, their friends and their family for Christ. And so the church has been blessed. We're kind of taking the next step out now. We just moved uh, south of where we were living to Musashi Kosugi, a new urban area. Uh, in southwest greater Tokyo, still Kawasaki, uh, just a different suburb. And uh, we're uh, starting from scratch here uh, with a new church plant. This is part of what we hope will be a cluster of new churches um, springing out of Den and Grace Chapel, uh, north, south, east, and west of Den geographically. Uh, and then working together and sharing resources and helping each other grow. And uh, as God blesses us, we hope to be involved in church planting work and seeing new churches uh, in the coming coming years uh, with Jack and Alyssa and uh, other appointees that are coming out. We're excited by that. The Mitchells are um, working with us uh, as well as the Changs. They're World Venture missionaries, career missionaries. Um, and so uh, we're putting hands together now for the church planting work in Kawasaki and Yokohama. Perfect. So I'm going to ask uh, Ken, um, describe some of the cultural differences you may have experienced as your first year as a missionary in Japan. What made you struggle to adapt and what was really interesting, interesting during those times? Sure, the best way I can try to describe that is um, the image of an onion. And if you think of an onion and the many peels, uh, layers that come with it, I think we come to uh, Japan with knowing the surface level uh, um, understanding of uh, Japan. They're an open country, they're a Western world, they're materialistic, they're secular, they're a polite people, uh, which they all are, which is great. 
Uh, and you and you come in with that thinking that you know what that's really we know how to deal with that we know how to evangelize and we know how to do that because we come from a western background and so forth but as you peel that out you start seeing that inner peeling is is really some deep deep uh, um, nationalism uh, deep uh, tie into their traditions that they are japanese and that if you are an outsider uh, you will always be an outsider unlike other countries where you assimilate in japan you will never be you will never be japanese you you, you can have people born here and they'll never consider you japanese uh, I, you can live here for 23 years and you'll never be japanese so there's just things that are the outside peeling and and i i use the, this because as you keep peeling out and you start saying, man, this is hard to understand. They're close people. They're an open country. All the, 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 the um, differences that you see, uh, they're, they're a, um, but in the, as you keep peeling them out, just like the onion, there's nothing in the core. There is nothing in there. And that's where you start seeing they all need Jesus. And this is where you, you walk around the 99.5% of the people. I have the opportunity to share the gospel to these people, but it's hard. I can't just bring in what I thought I knew. I got to unlearn almost everything and then really meet their needs where they're at. And uh, so those are just kind of maybe that image can help uh, the onion that has nothing in the core that we need to give Jesus. Perfect. And Kevin, same question. Yeah, I would agree with Ken. Uh, it is an onion with a lot of layers, and it also makes you cry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Japan does make you cry just a little bit every day. Um, and in good ways, though, too, you, you cry for the nation that uh, they would come to understanding of how good uh, the Lord is, and uh, they're, they're, you know, advanced and uh, um, modern society, and they have so many different uh, uh, things that uh, they're um, so, you know, well prepared for and, uh, and satisfied in, and yet they're, they are missing that, uh, that core that uh, Ken described. I think for, for me, um, uh, language. I, I know we're kind of talking about some of the challenges and differences. Yes. And uh, um, language I heard is kind of difficult for Westerners to learn, Alyssa, Jack. So be prepared for that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a humbling process uh, because it is uh, such a difficult language to learn. Uh, you have to be satisfied with um not being able to speak and share everything that you want to many times and uh you know sounding very childish sometimes and uh you know you you have so much competency that uh, you feel that you could bring to bear in a situation and then you realize that you can't form a sentence so um there's there's that kind of experience that goes on uh every day uh for 22 years and uh I expect we'll continue the next 22 years here uh, in my missionary career, at least until I get uh, perhaps retired or uh, to glory. Um, my language skills will never be perfected. Um, so it's a humbling process that the Lord leads you through and uh, you have to be willing to be shaped uh, in, in the middle of it. All kinds of um, personal uh, challenges uh, that you had in personality difficulties, maybe in uh, some some things from the past that were hard for you come out because of that stress and language. So just be prepared for those things. Uh, God is doing his work through weakness uh, every day uh, in missionaries here in Japan. And uh, so there's hope and uh, God is a good God and he's, he's gonna get the job done, uh, but we just have to be humble in the process. So Alyssa and Jack, did you do you have any thoughts on what Kevin and Ken said? It was challenging, um, and I don't like what he said about the language. But but no, it's uh, it's it's all good stuff to hear because it's it it, it makes us all very realistic 
And we have these hopes and desires of going over there thinking it's going to be perfect, going to evangelize so many people, going to win over so many to Christ. Um, but that's not it. And then mainly because it's not about us, it's about God and he's going to do the things that he wants, how he wants them. And I've probably repeated that so many times now, but yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking actually earlier today that it's really easy doing partner development to talk about all of the really awesome things and the things we're really excited about. And in doing that, it's easy to forget like, oh, like the reality of like, you're an infant and like, you can barely say two words. And it's really good to be reminded of those things because yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. So I mean, go I mean, ahead to hear the attitude, both Alyssa, Jack, think aware that it's going to be difficult. And that's very encouraging to me. The, um, when we were first here, we've been in Japan for 38 years and the first 10 years or more, we were pretty, well, we were heavily involved in, with short term ministry also and connecting and all that kind of, we're, we're kind of the jack of all trades, master of nuns, footlight type missionaries, not spotlighted. And uh, that's where we're gifted. The first time we recruited short termers, we talked about you know, this will do this, it'll be this, and all we talked about the good stuff. Knowing there'd be bad stuff, but we kind of didn't, we blew that over. Then we discovered that when we, that, that wasn't working because they'd get out here and they'd hit the black spots and they couldn't deal with it. It wasn't supposed to happen. So we started taught, we started recruiting short termers and they were doing great by saying, it's bad, it's difficult, it's going to be hard, but God is going to give you some great things. And what you're doing with um, support raising, whatever you're calling it now, it, all the words have changed. I was reading a book today. <laughs> on cross cultural communication and about cultural stress. And I'm going, my biggest place of cultural stress right now is world ventures. There's been so many big changes in the last, for 30 years, no changes. And then all of a sudden, but it's the, mark, it's the sign of something's going to happen. So don't give up on the numbers. Don't, don't count it by numbers, but like your support comes in out of totally out of places you never would predict. Come, Stay with the Lord. Be committed with the Lord. Every day, that bond that you have with the Lord, the deeper intimacy that you get. Though the strategy might not be working quite like you want, or a lot like you, you or not at all, the Lord takes something that we totally didn't think about because we were consistent with Him, and somebody responds in a way that you never ever would have expected that's beautiful so kevin i'm going to ask a very personal question how did you and cowdy uh meet i grew up in the south suburbs of chicago and uh, i didn't know much about japan but uh through moody i did my uh, undergraduate work at moody bible institute and there was a mission conference there, and uh, I made a commitment uh, to uh, serve uh, if the Lord would uh, use me overseas at that mission conference. And uh, I walked back to the dormitory, and there was a flyer in uh, the hallway of the dormitory that said, if you can speak English, there's 126 million people in Japan wanting to be your friend. So... <clears throat> That sounded pretty interesting to me to have 126 million friends. This was before Facebook, of course. And um, so I, I went, I took my, my tray and uh, went to the, uh, the orientation meeting. Um, and that was the first step uh, to um, going overseas. They were talking about Japan. They were talking about English teaching in Japan. Uh, and this was a short term opportunity. Um, and so I, I went. Uh, with uh, what uh, is now Asian Access, was Life Ministries at the time, 
uh, for eight weeks to northern Japan. And I found out there's a CB church way up in northern Japan. Who knew? Conservative Baptist Church in Japan. Uh, and But the best thing was that I, I found uh, a uh, lady who was uh, on staff there uh, at uh, Zao Baptist Church, uh, Kaudi. And uh, so we met that first summer. She was uh, the chaplain for uh, the English classes that I was doing. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, one, one thing led to the next, led to another second uh, summer in Japan and led to a year in Japan. Um, <laughs> and, and then uh, we were engaged and uh, we got married in the States and we spent uh, uh, five years and then uh, getting ready to return to Japan with World Venture full term. Uh, as queer missionaries. So we, we met in Japan. Uh, that, that flyer changed my life. Uh, that was the point that uh, the, the track of my life went from uh, Chicago, a suburb boy, uh, to here in Japan uh, with living with Kaudi and serving with World Venture. You'd have to ask Kaudi for the real story, but this is my version. You know, you know, maybe on another interview we can get you two okay. together and we can we can talk we can have her share the the real story. No, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> the female perspective, right? So, uh, how, tell tell us uh, about um, the Cross Project a little bit. Can you emphasize on that? I've been hearing that a lot when I taught was a, was getting this together. What is the Cross Project? Okay, the Cross Project is working through Den and Grace Chapel, a joint venture with our national um, Japanese believers here to plant a network, a small network geographically in Southwest Greater Tokyo uh, together uh, with uh, World Venture missionaries uh, and national believers together in service. And it's intended to do two things, really. Um, it's intended to accelerate church planting uh, by working together, sharing resources and helping each other grow. Um, and it's intended to help the missionary uh, do better, um, to be able to um, have a team that they can be part of, uh, socially, spiritually, emotionally supporting them. And, uh, and through uh, a, a combination of uh, different talents and backgrounds and personalities that we have. Uh, together, we can blend those things uh, for church planting work more effectively. Finding that there's a lot of missionaries that are coming out uh, that want to be involved in church planting, uh, but they might not have all the skills uh, or uh, everything that, um, you know, uh, all the training that they perhaps need uh, to be involved in leading a church plant but they can contribute to it as part of a team. So uh, we wanna form a team uh, for the next generation of missionaries uh, here in Southwest Greater Tokyo to do well. And so that uh, church planting um, can uh, be more quickly done. Um, I'll just share very quickly. Um, one of the things that was very uh, much a um, changing of my thinking about all this was uh, 311. Uh, 311, the, the triple disaster here in Japan, uh, the, the earthquake, the nuclear disaster, and the tsunami, <clears throat> March 11, 2011. We had been here already 10 years, uh, church planting at Den and Grace Chapel, and uh, it had been taking forever in our estimation, uh, to get this church uh, up and running, right? Ten years. Um, it's, a, it's a drop in the bucket, uh, but uh, it seemed forever. Um, and then 311 hit, and uh, <laughs> I, I realized that we didn't have forever anymore. We had been acting like we had forever to work in church planting because it had been taking forever, uh, but 
the reality is that eternity started for 20,000 Japanese people that day. And, and so we have to do something that changes the dynamic of church planting to speed it up so that more Japanese can confront the gospel message, more Japanese can be uh, connected to a church and disciple and growing, growing up in their faith. We have to do something to, to change this up a little bit. And that was the beginning of my thinking about church planting differently um, and, and thinking about doing it together as a team, as churches and uh, as missionaries. Beautiful. Ken, another personal question for you. How did you meet Bola? And tell us a little bit about, about Bola. Yes, yeah, so uh, um, Bola and I, uh, our background is the uh, very unorthodox way of becoming a missionary. Um, I met Bola when I auditioned for my, for my first band, Born and Raised in the Philippines. Um, Bola was, uh, is also Filipino. And so that's where uh, we were in the clubs, in the nightclub scenes, uh, in the concerts uh, in our 20s. And um, uh, Bola was a singer and I was a, a, a pianist, a director, an arranger and we would just uh, do gigs and we thought of course the the way of the world was life until god confronted us uh, through a bible study and that's where we met the lord and uh making a long story short uh bola and i uh, eventually migrated to the u.s we became believers in the philippines but we our faith grew in in, in the u.s and uh, in california and um bola is a physical therapist or was a physical therapist and then I got to business and finance, uh, thinking that we were going to, as new immigrants in America, live the life of, of the American dream. We had our house, our careers, our two cars, <laughs> and growing in, in faith in the Lord. And just like, uh, I guess, Jack, uh, and, and we just never thought of wanting to be a missionary. And, and then, of course, of all places, Japan. But uh, uh, you just never say never. And uh, when we did a two-week trip, here uh, as a short-term missionary because of just the the um, radical transformation he made he did in our lives. What we did was uh, we we would take our two-week vacation and we came out here in Japan and we did four, 12 concerts in 14 days and we were just struck by the need here. But when we went back to America, we said, we're not going back to Japan. <laughs> That's just not our place. But God said, uh, if you're going to be missionaries, uh, uh, you know, you better uh, think about this. Ebola was um, instrumental in finally making that decision to come to Japan. Uh, of course, I was thinking we should go back to the Philippines if we were going to be missionaries. We knew the language, we knew the culture. <laughs> it wasn't. It didn't take that much uh, amount of fu funding to get to the Philippines. But Japan was, everything was impossible, 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 impossible. The difference was if we went to the Philippines, it will be 100% Ken and Bola's power. But if we went to Japan, it will be 100% God. And so when we said, we looked at it that way, we better come to Japan. And Bola, just just by her nature, if uh, you knew Bola, just being so um, uh, bubbly with her personality and just so... Uh, unbelievably bold and courageous in her evangelism. Uh, it was, it just made sense for us to be here. That's beautiful. Uh, so what kind of missionary, uh, let's see, what kind of um, challenges did she face? Do you have any stories of her sharing the gospel that you can share? Maybe just like one story? So, yeah. So what we did was, uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, we, we were taking, uh, of course, we we're involved in church planting. That's part of our, our mission DNA here. But now we're also, we see a whole new generation like ourselves who have specialties. And that's why we have what's called an innovative ministry team in Japan as well, just as the church planting team and support ministries. So what we did was we said, okay, we're going to do... Uh, innovative ministries japan is a sophisticated culture they like uh they like music and and so what we did was um we were able to go out and, and do go into the jazz clubs here and do certain things that basically uh you wouldn't think missionaries would would be doing <laughs> and but that's our background we know it I, I normally tell people uh don't leave me in the church Put me where there's there's beer and alcohol and smoke-filled rooms. That's where we want to go. That's where we're good at. That's what we're good at. And Bola being the singer, being the upfront person she is, 
we would go and just do it. And of course, I'm the pianist. I'm back and she'd be in front. I, I really think she was just a better evangelist and, and just unbelievable. Through her singing, we would sing songs that would have double meanings. And, 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 but the struggles that she had were real. She was in a culture that um, really you couldn't be a, a woman and be like Bola. And those were the, those were the issues she, were, she was dealing with. Her language was not up to par, but uh, like what we were sharing here, uh, God will use that. Not that you stop learning, you keep learning. And that really was her struggle. And she, she would normally say the language was kept her, was what kept her honest in deep faith and leaning on God. Beautiful. So there, if you look on the worldventure.com website and you do a search on BOLA, B-O-L-A, you will find some articles on it, but it will be in the email that I send you after the event. Um, however, there's a quote that with all with all that's shared about her that was from one of the articles that is very, very good. She said, we've been called to do work that not everybody's been called to. I encourage everyone to take the bull by the horns and know that once you're called, God is going to get you through it. Every headache, every challenge, every cultural mishap and trust that God's name will be lifted and glorified. I think we are a special people with the privilege to be called to serve. Every ministry is unique and every ministry is important in God's eyes. And that is from an inter interview that uh, she and Ken did with Jeff Denlinger. Um, uh, so Ken, can you uh, tell the rest, I don't know how many on the group actually understand um, what happened with Bola. Could you ex briefly explain that and then kind of tell us um, since Bola went to glory, what was what has been the unique challenges of ministry work? Um, how are you overcoming them, and how are you seeing God's work in this season of ministry? Sure, um, it was interesting. We have been here 15 years, and our ministries were thriving. We were so excited. I mean, it's one of those rare occasions where we were just in a thriving ministry in, in Japan, uh, and so. But it was right in the middle of that that God um, also revealed to us uh, that Bola, Bola had advanced ovarian cancer. It was totally unexpected, and uh, we and it was just it just really um, threw me in a tailspin. Well, what it did was it showed God used Bola to uh, refocus as she was able to use her sickness uh, of it being eight months uh, uh, through this sickness and. Um, uh, basically just have a deeper understanding you know as missionaries we, we come out here and we know that we're going to win win do as much as we can for the lord mortality is not in the radar screen but until you face it uh and then you suddenly start thinking oh my gosh uh when you have only a day to live or you, you, there is no guarantee then you start thinking in in a deeper sense how you should live your life even as a missionary uh not taking things for granted so basically bola what bola taught me and the way i'm 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 able to live my life now today is that uh these four lessons in life while well, she was going through her cancer journey for eight months and then she she's and then she would use the word i'm not dying don't worry he says i'm just graduating to glory and so so that made us focus back to the source and basically she she would she taught me and many of, of us who were following her journey. She, instead of worrying, she learned to worship. Instead of uh, panicking, she had the peace of God. And instead of uh, and and in, instead of living in fear, it was to live by faith in Christ. And so I said, I don't want to. I don't have to have a a cancer diagnosis to live like that today. And so that's what's keeping me today. That is my life, uh, daily life operation now. Beautiful. Okay, um, Kevin, in light of that quote, um, share how you and Cody, um overcame any unique challenges as, as a married couple and as a family. Um, how did you rise above that as a team? Yeah, and I just want to say that uh, Ken and Bola and their example to us as they moved through uh, Bola's uh, cancer uh, diagnosis and then um, stages 
toward her promotion to glory, uh, Cannonbola were both a tremendous example to us uh, of faith and difficulty and um, the grace that she demonstrated uh, in her sickness really um, demonstrated Christ uh, to the Japanese believers and uh, to us as a missionary team. Appreciate, uh, appreciate you, Ken, and Bola and your lives. Um, <clears throat> I, I know what Kaudi would say if she was here today, because uh, we've talked about it many times together. Uh, so I can answer uh, probably for her pretty well that uh, the challenge for her is as a Japanese uh, believer, she's grown up in this country, Japan, lived here all of her life until that uh, five years in the States that we were married there um, <clears throat> until we moved back to Japan, that uh, she is kind of a third culture person too. We talk about third culture kids. Uh, she's, she's a third culture uh, missionary. And by that, I mean that uh, she has, well, she's got a Western husband American husband, um, and she's got a Japanese family, Japanese upbringing, um, and she's got one more culture in addition to that. She's got the, the Eastern, she's got the Western forces in her life, and then she's got the church culture. Um, as you know, Japanese are just a tiny minority uh, here. Japanese Christians are a tiny minority, 1%. Uh, so she was already kind of uh, a different uh, type of person from that experience. But to lay that aside and also look at that dynamic of being between East and West many times, kind of that triad of different forces in her life uh, is very hard for her sometimes to navigate. So she feels very much uh, between trying to interpret uh, between Western and Eastern culture and between church culture and uh, her unsaved uh, family and relatives and um, trying to explain many things. She feels many times like she is kind of between. Um, I, I think for myself as well um, in our married lives together, um, I've seen her struggle with that. Uh, and uh, I've also had my own struggle um, with uh, the culture uh, as an American uh, here in Japan. Um, Alyssa Jack, you don't know this, but as you come here, you're going to start to change to be more Japanese, okay? Your names probably won't change, your, your faces, and you'll still look very much American. But on the inside, your heart is going to start to change to be a little bit more Japanese just a little bit every day without you really paying attention or noticing it uh, until you go back to the States. And uh, I think our first home assignment, I, I really wanted to kind of reconnect to things. I was homesick. I wanted to be part of things, but I realized I wasn't. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't my culture anymore. And I, I hadn't noticed how much I had changed in the process of being here in Japan. And so there's that, that missionary identity crisis that we go through um, where we're, we're no longer Americans, we're no, we're, but we're not Japanese. As Ken was saying, we're not accepted completely into the Japanese uh, culture either. So we're really kind of in between. And then in addition to that, uh, Kaudi's always struggled with that church layer uh, being uh, a Christian in Japanese society. Um, you know, where is your fit? Uh, where do you belong? Um, that, that Buddy Green song, I Don't Belong, you know, that he sang so many years ago, really hits home. Uh, that uh, it's missionaries are a strange kind of thing. Um, and I've learned to be, I've learned to accept that tension uh, and I know that Kaudi has uh, in just being between cultures until uh, we get to heaven uh, and we can be fully home. Um, but uh, those, those kinds of challenges wait for uh, 
Alyssa and Jack and others that are coming. Uh, God is going to do a great work, um, not just necessarily through you, but in you to change you. And it's a great process. All right, now we're going to go talk to the, the, the Hills. Um, so we have a special guest joining us, uh, joining Cheryl and Leon. Uh, we have Kathy and Lou Luttrell. Um, they, uh, Kathy and Lou, you're from Grace Church in Illinois, and your former leaders and your current team, uh, your current members of the mission team, correct? That's right. Okay. Um, so we like the prayer partners and financial partners that a missionary and appointee connects with in most cases become longtime friends. The relationship between a missionary and prayer partner deepens into something rich over the years. Um, together, they, be, they become a team as one prays for a people and the other serves among a people. Cheryl and Leon, please share a bit about how much the Luttrell's friendship has meant to you. Um, how has their friendship helped you in the years of serving overseas? Well, we've met them and we were in their home frequently for meals and for overnights when we would be in Muhammad, Illinois. And they were on the mission committee, so they were involved and they were praying and we could share with them. And they understood what missionaries were like and what challenges we would face, sometimes even before we faced them. And then one year, we were coming back for a six month home assignment and we needed a place to stay. And the Lord kept telling us to make Muhammad, which is a significant financial supporter of ours, our home base. And so we wrote to the church and we said, we need a place to stay. And Lou and Kathy opened their home to us for six months. We lived together. And as they said, they're meeting in Jeffrey's room today. <laughs> and um, we were, we knew that the Lord had provided this and we thought, how is this going to work? It worked tremendously. It was a place where we could come and we could de-stress. After we'd been on the road, we could come back and we could say, oh, this awful thing happened. And, or this wonderful thing happened and we could just talk it over with them and they understood and they listened and they accepted us as we were and they accepted us into their family life and we were just incorporated into the life of the household and it was just a tremendous thing and then they came out here and um, spent a couple of weeks with us and going up into the disaster area and helping and it was just we were so glad we could host them after they had done so much for us. Perfect. Um, so Cheryl and Leon, being that you're the, the, the wiser of the group in this group, um, <laughs> uh, basically maybe what advice would you give to the, our two appointees today? In the scripture, in Psalm 139, it says that before we were even born, God had our days written down. And so I would tell you that before you were even born, God knew that you would be doing support development in a pandemic. And he knew that the borders of Japan would be closed, even though you were trying to come. And maybe you ha will have 100% support and not be able to come. But God is not up in heaven, wringing his hands, saying, oh dear, what should I do? He's got it controlled. And if you live your life every day, waking up knowing that this day, God knew before I even was born what this day would hold, you can walk in peace. The second thing is be flexible. Come with your ideas and your expectations and be ready to have them thrown out and start over again. And the third is pack your sense of humor. You're going to need it. <laughs> All right, so I did some snooping on your name online and came up with something that the Changs, who are also serving in Japan, Japan wrote. Uh, they wrote about you, Leon and Cheryl Hill. They have encouraged us so much and help us understand a lot more about the ministry in Japan and the spiritual challenge in Japan. They are a loving couple who, has, who have adopted two Japanese as, as their children. Both have grown now, but their son Jeffrey was autistic and needed special care, so they stepped up special care in their home for him. Many Japanese came to their home and was touched by their love toward this adopted son. Some come to the faith in Jesus through their loving action. Their faithfulness in the Lord is our example. 
So can you share uh, one story where um, this inspi- this this particular um, blog from the Changs inspires? I think uh, you shared one before, but share one story. Um, when we were doing the special care in our home for our son, we needed volunteers. And in a week's time, we would have 35 volunteers come through our home. And only 13 of those were believers. And we had different, the believers would bring their friends and they would say, can we bring them to come and volunteer in your home? And we said, well, sure, you can do that if you want. And we had kind of thought my ministry would be on hiatus while we were doing this. But my ministry just exploded during this time because we had these volunteers who were helping us do different things with Jeffrey. And we had one lady who came and she was coming to our church and she was kind of a pre-believer and she had many, many emotional and mental problems. And, but she came and she heard the gospel over and over. And apparently through hearing from the volunteers who came with her who were Christians, they said through that she came to know Jesus, but she had many mental and emotional problems and eventually committed suicide. And the church was very worried about what would happen with her family, but her family said, the times that she spent with us and with the church were the happiest times of her life. And God used that, even though she was distraught and she never did get over those mental situations, she's healed now because she's in heaven and she's with the Lord. And she wouldn't have had that if she hadn't come. And my son is reminding me that there are two people in Japan who came to know the Lord because we came to Japan. And that's Jeffrey and Abby, our two kids. (laughs) Kathy and Lou, what advice would you give Jack and Alyssa as church leaders? One of we're on a journey. Each of us is on a journey and God is, is in charge of that journey. And we, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know that he's in charge and that he will lead us to the, to the right people. And they, as somebody else said earlier, you never know who's going to be your next big supporter, your next little supporter, who's going to meet, uh, fill a need that you have. And I, I think it's, you know, it, it's that that's really exciting for you to do this the discovery. And I remember when the Hills started out, we were waiting on prayer letters that would come, was it quarterly? I, they, they were in the mail and they would come through a uh, World Venture office and we would get a, a stack of them and we'd d- distribute them. Now we get, uh, you know, regular emails. I mean, we're at a a time of uh, uh, technology that we can have Zoom. We can use that in developing contacts with with people and learn to learn, you know, develop that relationship that you can contact people who need to to be able to support you in prayer. in order to have prayer, I need to know what your needs are. Mm-hmm. And so um, be open and honest and, and communicate. And you don't know who, who are going to be your your your, your supporters. Who, who's going to open up their home to you on a home assignment when, when you can't go to your home or you need to go somewhere other than where you usually go? Um, you know, God's in control. And... Uh, explore where he has you going you have anything the only thing i would really ask would add is don't be afraid to ask for prayer don't be afraid to be honest and open don't be afraid to say you're struggling if you are um those are the things that those of us who are supporting you need to know and that helps us that gives us a whole lot more fuel to put on the fire of our prayers. And it also gives us some ideas of other ways besides praying that we can support you. Um, We're part of your cheering group. 
and we need to know where you need to be cheered on. We saw Leon and Cheryl have to make adjustments. Their defined ministry changed over the years and they really, um, they, they had times when things weren't, weren't so easy. And I can remember Leon being very honest saying, I don't like this particular part of the ministry. So we knew we could pray for him more in those areas. Um, when they were dealing with um, with Jeffrey's health, when Jeffrey was was a baby, the struggles that they had with a lot of questions, he, they were able to let us know, maybe not the details that we could get nowadays, but enough to say we needed to pray and and we were able to. So beautiful. Yeah. All right. So we are getting on to the end of our time.